Rangers legend Mark Hately in the studio for Football Daft with Ewan and Grado. Hello, Mark Hately. How are we doing, guys? Not bad. How are you? Uh, not bad. First question I'm going to ask, I'm going right? to say not bad. Take that all back because that is my... I hate to hear that when people say to me, oh, I'm not bad. So is that good or bad or what? What, well, what are you? You're fantastic. You just come so back from Shanghai. We yep. might touch on that yep. at some point during the chat. But I'm going to ask one question before we do anything else. Grado, mm -hmm. huge Rangers man. Yes. You'll know Mark Cately clearly. Yes. Yeah, we Was, both know each other very well. Yes. Right? So you yes. know each other very He's well. Well muckled up. Yeah. Right. And, and, and clearly you know your, your Rangers history. Right. In your opinion, Grado, mm -hmm. was Mark Cately the greatest ever striker at Ibrox? Yes or no? No, it was Alan McQuist. Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. I'm asking. Cately and McQuist. Great. The best double act. The best double act. You know, there'll never be a striking partnership like that ever be Ibrox. I never asked. But, so, so I, never, I never asked you about right. what was the best partnership. Mm -hmm. I asked you who was Rangers' greatest ever striker. Now, Mark Cately and Ali McCoy are in the greatest ever 11. Aye. But if you're to pick one striker to lead the line, is it Hately or is it McCoy? No, the only reason why I'm going to pick Ali McCoy is. No, uh, listen to the question. Lead the line. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> listen to the question. Now. Right. Go. There was Mark Hately. <laughs> 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 Made a hank about it. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is, my first, the first season when I started to go to games, when my, my father started taking my tie books, was the eight in a row year. Mm -hmm. And I think you had left in the yep, end of seven QPR. in a row. Yeah, yeah. You went to QPR. And uh, so McCoy was my hero. But the following season, when you were brought back, hey, Lee's coming home, <laughs> he's coming home. And you played in the first. I always remember it was at the f your first game back was the game at Parkhead, was it no? Yes, it was indeed. D Arrived right. on the Thursday, played on the Aye, Sunday. that's right. Yeah. Aye. And uh, what, did you get sent off that day? What happened? Was I sending no, off? That was me. Did you get sent off? There's more than one way of skinning you, a cat. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> Was it, did you start hitting somebody? No, I, well, I got sent off for an alleged headbutt, but there was no headbutt. The right. referee was standing behind me, and all, right. all I did was put my head down as the goalkeeper come running out. Aye. Couldn't get my arms up. Charlie Miller had got me in a bear hook, so I'm taking a defensive stand. Aye. So the referee behind me saw my head go down, but the, the goalkeeper was this far away from me, all so right. red card. But I was probably... Probably one is the game if you if you turn it round because we were getting battered, mm -hmm. right? And I think the the the, the red card, the sending off down to ten men, you get a, you get a reaction, Aye. you get a reaction from the supporters, Aye. you get a reaction from the players. The players rolled their sleeves up and mm -hmm. we and we ground the one and we and we ground the one one nil win. So what you're saying is that Rangers are better without Mark Hately? Mm, probably. <laughs> 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 um, so even back then, the referees had it in for Rangers? Um, not with their, with their, with not their dodgy decisions. Is that what you're saying, Mark? Not really. No, no, no I don't think. I think uh, referees have got a difficult job anyway. I'm all for VAR coming in next season at, at the highest level. And I mm -hmm. think it will filter down into all major leagues. And hopefully, you know, Scottish football, we always like to lead with what we do. Or, you know, being a small country, I think we should take it and, and, and run with it. And be a league that has all the high-tech stuff and, and, and is promoting the game. So, anyway, by the no, way. No, no, it's, 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 it, it is what it is. It's a hard, hard game for a referee now. The game is so, so fast. Um, with, with that, you, you get mistakes. You get a lot of mistakes. If the game's happening at 100 mile an hour, you know, it's, I mean, we've introduced more, more officials behind the goals in Europe and, all, and they still can't get it right. So we have to go to another level. Technology is always the level, yeah. right, that is going to sort anything human out. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. Grado, be because you're such a fanboy when it comes to Rangers and you're sat in that next to a Rangers legend, if I'd said to you, even just three, four years ago, you'd be sat in a studio beside Mark Hately, what would you have said to me? It would never happen, but this has always been my dream. This is brilliant. This is a dream I'm for you. I'm actually sitting here. I was in Benidorm for the weekend there. And this morning I woke up rough, but see now, this is great. Oh, but it's hotter in here than it it's, was in bed. Oh, well, I, it's <laughs> sweltering. Can you just take another, another log I mean, on that? I it. really... <laughs> and uh, we need to get that sorted out, come on. I know there's sound issues by getting aircon in here, yeah. but this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Our guests, you've got guests here, and it's embarrassing. It is hot, isn't it? I can't believe we've got a gas fire on in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk more about Rangers and your career at Rangers, but let's go back to... Let's go back to the Milan days when you turned up at Milan, because we were talking off air before we sat in the studio. 
I didn't realise that you turned up in Milan with a couple of kids. Yeah, yeah, I did. And how old were you when you went to, to AC Milan? 21, coming up to 22. Uh, but I got married uh, the first time, uh, first time round um, at 18, um, which calmed me right down. Had a, were well, you a, a mental family. case? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, sort of much, yeah. Mm -hmm. I sort of lived my life how I played on a football pitch. You know, it was all 100 mile an hour mm -hmm. and it was... Were you all and elbows and everything? Everything, mm -hmm. everything. And that's basically how of my, my personality, obviously. I, the older you get, the calmer you become and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it was, a, it was, it was a tr the best thing I did going with, with a small family, you know, because it gave them an education into another, right. you know, a, a, another culture. Um, was that not a nightmare at the age of 21, moving to Milan to play for AC Milan and you've got a family? Yeah. Just think of the fun you could have had yeah, or did you still have? Just think where I was coming from. I was coming from British football, second division British football as well. Uh, so it wasn't top fight football. So Milan took a major punt on 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 bringing. This they took a chance on you. This big young centre forward, who's you know was as raw as they come, um, yeah. far from the unfinished article. Um, Did you have a good time in Milan? Though? I had a fantastic time because that's where I learned to play football. Oh. I used to uh, train the first team uh, every morning. And then more often than not, probably when you're not playing in Europe and you've not got Cup Italia, the, the Neil Slido, the manager, extended forward, Swedish Cup, uh, uh, Brazil, Sweden Cup final 58. He used to take me with uh, uh, Fabio Capello, who was just starting his coating badges and doing the Primavera, which is the youth team, oh. uh, with a goalkeeper and a bag of balls and put a load of cones down on the foot and, and literally go through every position I should be in when a right back or a left back or a left sided midfield player or a centre half had the ball, told me literally physically put me in a position where I should be with V's and W's in the opponent's half. Because you and your got that in England. No, 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 because we, I mean, we're still st steak and chips for, you know, <laughs> steak and chips and, and, uh, and everything that goes with that, you know? Um, so it was, a, that was where it was, a, it was like going to university of, of, of football. You were a good looking guy. Did you grow your hair out when you went to Italy? Is that when you started growing your hair? Uh, yeah, because I had my hair shaved right in when I was oh. young. Um, yeah, played in the under twenty ones with a completely. All we played against Spain um, in the under twenty uh, one European final um, back in the day. Blessed, still, still the last English side to to, to win that under twenty one thing with Bob. And I, th this is the, the the story. So I scored in the final against Spain. I get to go on the England trip to South America before the the Mexico World Cup as as a, a preempt to you know acclimatization, mm -hmm. looking at the situation, looking at the hotels and, or, and what we were going to come to to the World Cup in 86. Um, John Barnes scored that jammy goal where he danced around four or five players. And, scored, and, I. and I scored the second goal. Nobody remembers that. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows. I actually that, genuinely didn't know that you scored that goal. And can I say, that's still the last Englishman to score a winning goal against Brazil in the Maracanã. <laughs> That's, I didn't yeah, know that. Did you know no, that? No, there, no, you there you go. There you go. Even I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that goal like? You know, mind us of it. It was just a, a cross from John Barnes to the far post. And, and you headed a, it in. Straightforward header against a boy, Moser, that went on to have a good career in, 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 in Europe. Big oh. boy. Um, just a straightforward header down at the foot of the post. Back of the net, 2 0. So, game, so, game so when you're at Milan. Don't ask me what I did for the next three days because <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> So you're at Milan, and Gredo's just kind of touched on it there. Did you grow your hair out in Milan because you wanted to have that Italian, Adonis kind of yeah, look, that I good look? You had the tan, you had the black yeah. hair. Well, I sort of picked up the, the, the nickname Attila, uh, which came from the, the, <laughs> right. the, the way I played, right? <laughs> right. right. Uh, we we'll stay, we'll stay with the Attila, right? <laughs> So it, it came from the way I played, and obviously Attila, the the warrior, that uh, right, the warrior, right, right, right across, warrior. yeah, right, warrior. Ac right across Europe, <laughs> um, and, and with that, I think superstition as well. I didn't I was growing the hair and growing the hair because I went with short hair, mm -hmm. and, and it grew and it grew, and it just you know, the, the legend started from that. You know, the looks. The, mm -hmm. the, the way I played football, the long hair and all that sort of stuff. And that's where... That's Did you where take advantage of your long hair and your good looks? Um, um, not really. No, I just got on with the game of playing football. Um, I think I think when you're playing at a level like that, you, you, you're just trying to play football. So what would your better. day then be at Milan? Training, home, and that was it. Because I couldn't go out anywhere. It was, it was absolutely... You know, were you, were you like the, go shopping, was it, were you like the John Lennon of the 1980s in football? Uh, uh, pretty much like, well, I want to say, you know... Uh, were you like mega superstar? 
Well, there was, yeah, there was comparisons because down south there was Maradona mm -hmm. and, and, up, and there was this young English upstart up in the north. You know, in, in that year, um, it was Maradona got player of the year and I got young player of the year. Mm -hmm. So there was that competition, north and south. North and south Italy mm. don't like each other. Yeah. They don't get on. Yeah. Um, so there was always um, rivalry, rivalry sort of stuff. So, but um, yeah, it was it was what it was. I, you know, got, had to deal with that um, at an early age, which was another education. The football in education was coming on the training ground, and the off-field education was was coming through them experiences that was how, that I was you know mm. going through. And Milan still love you because just recently at the Milan derby, mm -hmm. there was this mural. That was that was unveiled by the fans. And yes. it, it, it's you in the, the ultras. Yeah, it's it's the ultras yeah. still clearly adore you because there you are, centre of this huge display yeah. Yeah. at the Milan Derby, and mm -hmm. it's you rising above everybody with a header. Yeah. What's what, what was that header? Um, it was listen, it was it, it, it was me, a player, a young player, being in the right place at the right time. Um, it was in a Massively big game for Milan. Milan being regulate, uh, uh, relegated down the leagues for irregularities. Um, so the previous to that, they hadn't won um, uh, a Milan derby for six, seven years. The guy I was playing with that day was the Milan uh, captain who had jumped ship and 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 gone to Inter, Colavati. Mm -hmm. yeah. So international. So you know, scoring a winning goal against the the ex captain uh, meant that the club were being reborn, mm -hmm. and that's what that's what they saw through me. The way I played football, I was 100 mile an hour, and never give up, never, never be defeated. Um, and you know, it was, I mean, it was a great side. We had Tassotti, we had Maldini uh, coming into the side in the second year. We had uh, uh, Baresi, Costa Corta, we had a uh, Donadoni Masaio. Wow. I played one year with Paolo Rossi, Pietro Paolo Verdi. But you're showing off now. No, no, no. But this was this is what I was wow. working into, and I was coming from second division Portsmouth. <laughs> I you know, I you know, staggering. So, you know, so you can go into that environment and absolutely go, oh, oh, and freeze yeah, and uh, 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 like yeah. that. Yeah. But I just went in and, and reveled in it. You know, mm -hmm. it, uh, and just because I love football, mm -hmm. basically, I was brought up as obviously the son of a, a famous footballer. So got to see the ins and the outs on the training ground when I was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper, if, if you want to call it that, with my dad. So I've experienced all this as, as growing mm -hmm. up. So it's really nothing is different. You know, it's 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 a it's a game of football where you're trying to outdo the like, the guy you play against. And going to a big club or a small club, you're still trying to get the same effect yeah. out of yourself and for a team. So whether it is Milan or Portsmouth or Rangers or whatever. You're always going to get the same sort of uh, reaction from from me, the way I trained and the way I played. So you're at AC Milan, then where? Uh, off to Monaco. I was I was the first Wenger signing. Uh, Wenger had just come to Monaco. So Arsene Wenger oh, signed you? God, do you do, do, you, do you do research in this place or what? <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I am, I, I am edu I, I, I want to come across as if I'm being educated. Of, that's why I'm asking you these questions. But you're saying you know, but you're I trying know, to make it look like I just want, I just, I don't, I don't want me to set, tell you. I want you to tell us. Yes. yes. Right. This is Arsene how this podcast. Right. Can I just explain how this podcast is going to work? Right. Because you've just tried to make me look stupid there. Do well, I have you're notes? You're doing a fine job on your own. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Do I have notes on you and pictures yeah, of you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, I've got I notes do. and I've got pictures of you. I know your career inside and out, Good. but I'm not going to sit here. Remind and me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and tell you your career. I want you yeah. to tell me yes. about your career. Arsene Wenger signed me. So yeah. Arsene Wenger signed yes. you. Yes. yes. <laughs> Did you not know that, Grado? Did you? Did, I'm going to say thing as you. Wait, you see, I'll tell you what we're going to do before we go any further, Mark. Right? So we've, we've, we've done Milan. We're a, we've just arrived in Monaco. Right. We now know that Arsene Wenger has signed you at Monaco, right? right. So clearly, Grado's done his research like me. So I'm Correct. going to let Grado take this part of the chat forward in regards to Monaco. Yeah. I've done Milan. He's now going to talk to you about Arsene Wenger and Monaco. Right. So when did Rangers contact Monaco? <laughs> <laughs> More or less straight away, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, <laughs> Then what happened yeah, when you went yeah. to Ibrox? <laughs> so, uh, I tell you, Graham trying to get me a couple of times. He tried Aye. to get me after the first year at Milan Aye. and then the year I was leaving Milan. Because um, at the particular moment I was leaving Milan, Milan and Bellasconi was in there. Bellasconi wanted me to go out of the country. Because right. I was 
he didn't want me to come back and bite him on yeah. the, the, ver- the proverbial. No, you can sit where you like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what was it? What was in case you were biting what? On the uh, backside. Backside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a, such a good relationship with the supporters, as mm-hmm. you've just mentioned. Um, so Monaco came along, Arsene Wenger, new young, vibrant coach, um, into into a, a massively established team, basically. So did, so can, if I picked you up right there, off the, I think it was a very good question, Grado, because it led to something I didn't know. Yeah. Soon as tried to get I you from guess. Milan. Yeah. So first time. But, first time. So yeah. soon as tries to get you from Milan. Yeah. Do you, do you meet soon as? Uh, no, no. I just so, had a phone call. Th- you, uh, my agent, right? So you yeah. get a phone call. Why did you choose Wenger over Sunes? Yeah, because I wanted to stay in Europe and I wanted to have a different culture, a different way of uh, looking at the game. Because so French, it wasn't doing money. N- no, no, no. Uh, he's, been, he's been in Milan. Yeah. He's been yeah. at Monaco. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Glasgow. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It, a student of the game. But uh, listen, I, as I how said, old were you then at this point in your career? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So you knock back Sunes. Yeah. You go to Monaco. But, yeah, I did. I went. I went there for an, another education and another, uh, you know, another look at football. Uh, basically, did another you say style to of football. Did you say to Sunus at that point, "Look, yeah, I'm interested, but no. maybe another day." Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So listen, he listen. knew that you were yeah. interested, but not quite yeah, yet. Yeah, I mean, the, my agent Dennis Roach was pretty much in contact with 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 Rangers for a while, um, on and off, sort of. So thing. that was always there. Yeah, it was always there. So um, did, you, did, you always, did you always know, even when you went to Monaco, one day you'd end up at Rangers? Uh, yeah, I was liking to think that would be the, the path. Okay. Um, but um, it eventually came. The time was right for me. Um, so how long did you stay at Monaco? Three years. Three won, years. I won a championship in the first year. Went to the cup final. Then I had a bad injury, uh, which kept me out for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, four operations, two years. And that's when I bumped into Graham in 1990. It was at the Hotel de Paris in Monaco. who was staying there with... Uh, David Holmes, the, the chairman okay. then, mm-hmm. and and Ian Skelly, mm-hmm. and they were travelling backwards and forwards to to Italy to watch the football, and bumped into him, and he just said, he said, big man, how, how you doing, Bob? And I explained the story, said, fancy coming to play for us next year, um, and really didn't think too much of it, and he said, no, I'm serious, you fancy coming, just looking for a centre forward, bump, 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 um, I'd literally, I'd just signed a, a brand new. On, on the back of my injury, I just signed a brand new four-year contract with Monaco. So I, st- oh, I had another three years left running on that contract. And how so old were you at this point? 27. 27. So coming up 28. So, so 28 you've, you've just signed a four-year deal yeah. at Monaco. Yeah. There's a year into that four-year deal. Yeah. You're sitting at 27. Prime time for a, a striker? Um, no, I, I, I don't think I don't think strikers... Well, I didn't. I didn't. I was playing my best football at about 31, 32 years right. old. Um, but don't forget, I had two years out. Yeah. So it probably arrived two years later. Yeah. Um, but so, so, so when, so, so when you decide that Rangers are your next move, you still got three years on your Monaco contract. Yeah. Was that a difficult one to get out of? Uh, not really. I sat down with Wenger, and Wenger was very easy to deal with. He said, you know, either way, he said, you get our blessing. He said, you'll stay here. You'll be. You know, you become you'll become a stronger player for it, character wise. And we have the we have the utmost faith in you. That's why we gave you the new contract to to be a better player than you were before the injury. Um, he gave me everything I needed to get back. I had a personal trainer every day that we you know just work your socks off every day, um, and he would report back to Wenger, and he knew what he was getting anyway mm-hmm. because I was that sort of so that sort of character. I wanted to play for England again and all that sort of stuff. So I still had. Lots and lots of ambitions, even though I'd been playing in Europe and you say all this all yeah. this money and all that sort of, But I've never been driven by that. I've always been driven in by trying to be the best I can be every every given day. Yeah. So this is a point where I hand over to Grado because we're now going to be going into the Rangers years. Right. And because I am not a Rangers fan right. and I'm not as, as well versed when it comes to talking about Rangers... Gredo, this is Hi. your opportunity to discuss with the Rangers legend everything mm-hmm. that you ever wanted to know about that time when Hately turns up at Ibrox to play for Graham Sunas. Over to you, Gredo. I, I don't know, but did Sunas Sun never sign you? He what? did. No, so, Graham. Right, so yeah, yeah. right, okay. That, that, you get that. A lot of people get that mixed uh, up. Yes, say, yeah. I thought it was yeah. what. So tell me about the first day at Ibrox. <laughs> the first day with <laughs> Tell me about it. First tell day. Me, who approaches you first? <laughs> Can I just... You know, tell me all about it. Listen, I, I agreed I agreed with Graham that I would come. Um, and, and as I say, Wenger 
you know, wished me all the best. And I assigned and I turned up at Ibrox. And the first thing we did was try and look for somewhere to train, basically, because we didn't have a training. Really? Ground. No, Jimmy Bell, we used to jump on a minibus with Jimmy Aye. Bell and try and find somewhere to train before Aye. get on there. Do as much as we come before we got thrown off. So it was, you know, the the cricket. Uh, the the cricket ground yeah, made yeah, a home. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we travelled all over the place to get Aye. a piece of grass. Uh, we trained on the Albion some days, uh, but looked for you know a better quality. So that's that's the Aye. situation we were in back back then. See no, that because nobody had training grounds. This Aye. is how far behind British football was. See that day when you're holding the Rangers scarf above your heads. Yes. Do you remember that day? Do you no. remember that first day? No. You don't. <laughs> Do you not? Seriously? You don't remember your first day at Ibrox? Um, no, not no. really. <laughs> was it a bit of a whirlwind, was it? Did it? Was it? Was it? I remember really running around Belly Houston Park uh, pre-season. Right. And I, yeah, probably remember being sick and watching a load of other guys being sick uh, and running around there. The hardest pre-season ever. Under Sunas? Under, un, yeah, absolutely, 100%. That was the fittest... The fittest I've ever been. I came when I came back from Monaco to to two Rangers. I weighed twelve stone three, and as soon as I came back and started playing in, mm. in games, I, d I could never survive playing at twelve stone three. So I went up to thirteen stone ten, literally in two months right. of training, weight Muscle. lifting, yeah, right. and and pie and chips back onto the old <laughs> diet. <laughs> you yeah. know. Uh, so what about see how when were you tuned tuned in about the old firm? Yeah, well, I knew about that from you, so way back, did, way, 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 way back. Listen, my, when my dad was playing at Chelsea, I supported three teams anyway. Through when yeah. I was when I was growing up, from about the age of eight, nine, my dad was playing there in '67, so it would have been six, seven. That's the first team I remember my dad playing for, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. um, sort of that link between the two, aye. yeah, and all aye, that aye. sort of stuff. But I supported Nottingham Forest at that particular time, Chelsea. And Rangers as a boy growing up, really? only, only Nottingham Forest right. because my dad was playing for Nos County, so ah. I just supported them. Just people to listen to <laughs> pe <laughs> pe <laughs> people listen to some go. He never supported Rangers when he was a kid because a lot of people yeah, do that. say that, yeah. and a lot of people do nope. doubt it. No, nope. yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, I but and I, and support, I, and I bel support kept an eye on them. aware ah, of. Yes, yes. Aware, yes. Aware everyone everyone has yes. a Scottish They're, club, yeah, yeah. and they were my team. They were your team, yes, without a shadow of a doubt. So. Go on. I thought I was just mad about you. Yeah. Right, go on, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, so do you remember your first old firm game? Or was it was the first? Oh, well, listen, I, I do remember <clears throat> it now, but when you come to to Glasgow and you're playing for Celtic or Rangers, and I would imagine it is for, 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 for Celtic as well players, you don't remember the first game right. at all. It happens that fast, right? And, and I've, I played in the Milan derbies, you know, and they were very tactical, very, you know, chess like -y games, you know, you're pulling people out of position. Mm -hmm. And you and you go into an old firm game and it's mm -hmm. like crash bang wallop, football goes out the window, Aye. sleeves sleeves go up, it's anything above the grass. Mm -hmm. Um and you get on with it. And the the, the the biggest thing for me was how many chances the strikers were getting in the old firm games. You know, in a in a, in a Milan derby you probably get two chances in three games. You know, that's yeah. how mm -hmm. clinical the game was. So, you know, crash, bang, wallet, physical, um, very much so, especially in that era of, of football, you yeah. know, when you could tackle. And tackle from behind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so see, see when you're different. A, what, what do you remember about the dressing room ahead of an old firm game? What was Sunis like? Was he demented? Was what? he like jumping up and down and what kind of like drooling at the mouth? Yeah, what goes on in the dressing room stays in the dressing room. <laughs> I, know room. I, know, I, know, I know that yeah. and I and I hear no. that, but now that, that so much time has now passed yes. and, and I've interviewed Graham mm. Sunish, he's a bit more mellow than he yeah, once yeah. was. Yeah. Was he a scary guy to work for? Um, to scary, play not really, not really. I think if if you... Did he, did he, did he, if you did look at managers, managers try and model their teams on their own characters. Uh, you know, Graham was... A, an ultra professional, um, you know. He took no prisoners. Took no prisoners on the pitch, and, and, I, I, and, and he, I guess want, he wanted all of it, all of his players to be the same. So, what was that dressing room like? It was alpha males. There you go. So, yeah. you know, dressing rooms sort themselves out, and especially was, the quality of players that Graham had bought bought into the club. You know, you know, you got Terry, you got Goffey in there, yes. you got myself, you got John Brown, you've got all this. You know, the goalie, you got Chris Woods. Would there be fights? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there? absolutely. And, and, and a, a lot of anger at times when you hadn't played well or you hadn't won a game, would there be fights? Frustration? Yeah, it's not anger, it's frustration because mm -hmm. you can see things happening that should be happening in certain positions. Would you I call mean, people out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's what leaders do. Have them uh, up against yeah, the wall? Yeah, all that sort of stuff. You what, have. What, what, what was, uh, what's your 
most abiding memory about an incident in the dressing room, like if a game hasn't gone the way you've expected, that you were maybe involved in, did you get picked out, did someone pick no, on? No, not too, too many. So a, a, a good manager, let's play a sort it out first. Uh, Together? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take you back. Walter many, many times would stay out the dressing room and, and he would, you know, if he were playing poorly, um, he would stay out the dressing room. Archie would stay, sit in the corner and just listen to what was going off. And, you know, Richard would be getting up, Goffey yeah. would be getting up and we'd be having a scream and a shout and pushing them. And get that 10 minutes out, air, air everything that y y we felt was wrong. So uh, the manager would not be in the dressing no, room at that he point. He would allow you he, uh, and the players to the deal leaders, with it. The leaders to sort it out and deal with it, then sit down and he would pop his head in, come in and just say, are we sorted now? And then he would go back out and then we'd go back out and onto, onto the pitch. And that's what that's good a, management right. does. You know, you come in, you know when to talk to players, you know which players that need an arm around them, some don't need an arm around them, some need protecting from themselves. And that's, that's what Walter's, uh, Walter uh, had in abundance. He was who, so smart. Who that. was the biggest pain in the arse in that dressing room? Who was the one that really annoyed you? The one that was just so... Well, I sat between McCoyst and Durant. <laughs> so, so figure, <laughs> figure that one out. You got, got Ian, and you Ian got, Ferguson you, sitting next to. Oh, uh, well, you got in stereo then, haven't oh, you? But everybody, everybody was a character. I mean, right, right back from as you open the door, it's, it's numbered one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's where you sat every day when you came into training because that's where we went from training. Right. So mm -hmm. match days was just a similar day to a training day. Mm -hmm. So it was. It was, an in, it was an interesting day uh, on a Monday after a weekend. Well, that's what I was going to, that's what I was going to say. Is, well, you ever, were you a part of that kind of drinking party culture? Because that was around at the time with uh, women yeah, Coist yeah, and yeah. Ferguson. Yeah. and was it Goffs is Go a team that drinks together, yeah. well, wins we, together. That we, was, we always had a Wednesday out. We'd, we'd train on a Wednesday. Yeah, well, proper we, party night out. Yeah, yeah but listen, uh, we were always suited and booted. We came in suited and booted and clean shaven every day of the week yeah. for training. Um, standards are up there. Aye. Right? So was that a standard set by Sunas? Yeah. No, yeah. no, it's always been there. It's always been yeah, there, it's okay. It's always been there, back, way back. Um, so we were always ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, it was like Ho Wong, Amber Regent, for a Chinese, after yeah. trading, and then it would be a couple of... They charge you for prawn crackers, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> into Princess Square. Do they charge you for prawn crackers? Two pound, I'm sure it was, eh? Yeah, yeah. Seen me coming. Amber Regent charge yeah. you two pound yeah. for oh, prawn crackers? No, in fact, it was next to one, is it opium? On, on, uh, I charge you for that as well, did I? Uh, <laughs> 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 no, that I think it's called, it's called the opium or something like that. And whole sheet across the from that Donna place. I'm sure it was either in there. I'm recently the charged for a what? We were in GDK. That there's a uh, Chinese Street. Street. I think it's Regent Street. I think, Regent Street. I think it's called. I think it's called opium. Is that what that be called opium, mate? Mm, no, I've never yeah. heard of a Chinese yeah. restaurant you know called opium. There you go. Well, they charge you for. Prawn crackers, yeah. two pounds. So do you remember back in the day if you got charged prawn crackers? That's, well, that's what we're getting at here. You, you need to go and see Jimmy and Lai Chi. Right, right. Okay, I've noted that. Uh, Jimmy and Lai Chi. By the way, Lai Chi Oriental for Fantastic. me is the best Chinese uh, restaurant right. in, in, in Glasgow. Jimmy, Jimmy's man. amazing, such a lovely guy. Yeah. And I'm not we're not mentioning no. him because we want a no. free Chinese no. from him. No. But if you are it's listening, Jimmy, a, give yeah. me a call. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so you, you would go out and you'd drink together. You'd have wild nights out. Yes. All that, yeah, yeah. As long as we weren't on the front page the next day, That's that it. was cool. Mm -hmm. Everything was cool. We went to training the next day, um, you know, did our stuff, you know, sh suited and booted again, got ourselves ready for a match day. Invariably, we won more than we lost, so, mm -hmm. you know, we were celebrating more than we were. So on a Wednesday down. night, you, you go out for your Chinese... You then get lunchtime. Lunchtime. Oh, yeah. uh, day shot. Uh, an, uh, an, an old day. Yeah, yeah. And into the evening. Yeah. Wow. Um, and what would be your drink of choice at that point with your Chinese? Well, and I've always been a lager drink. A bottle, lager. Of, bottle of beer. Bottle of beer. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and you'd drink that. How many beers would you have on that Wednesday? Probably three or four. Three or four? Yeah, would dozen. you? Have, would, would, <laughs> <laughs> Um, would there be times after that Wednesday night drinking escapade that you would be going home and would be rather drunk and wake up worse for wear and hungover? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a, a good release. I think we, we trained as hard as we played um, every day of the week. Uh, and that's that's the secret. You know, and so you if know you, if that's you... what he want. That's what Graham Sunis and Walter wanted. He wanted us to train as if it was a match day. My old man, oh, the best piece of advice, train how you're going to play. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, don't pull that's out. A, no, that's how it is. You, you, you can't just turn a notch up on a match day. Yeah, yeah. If you're training, whatever you, you, whatever sport you're doing, you have to be, I know, to to a certain certain uh, extent, 
on your game every day in training. Well, tell me, so when you, when, you, when you left Rangers, did you want to leave? Or did you want to stay in training? You know, because obviously seven in a row, there's talk about ten in a row. Yeah, and it was a tough... Uh, a so tough when did you list. leave? Yeah, I left. Seven in a row, wasn't it? Yeah, I left at seven in... Why? Uh, 95, 96. So um, I made a bad, bad decision. Um, so why? A, a poor decision. What happened there, Mark, that made you leave? I had, I had an operation on my ankle and my knee at the same time. So I've had two operations in, in, in one setting, and... I often I always say to people, never make a decision, an important decision, mm. when, when you're in ill health, you know, because invariably it's the wrong decision. And I made probably the biggest mistake of my, of my career. But on, on the upside to that, um, I was a 33, 34 year old striker that was, I think, QPR offering £1.5 million for a 34, 35 million, Aye. which is a lot of a lot money. money. Um, I think it made sense to, for, to, to the to, to the Rangers Football Club and did to, Ra to did, David did, Murray. So, did Rangers force that through? No, no, completely not. No. And, and I thought... Because as you say, yeah, it's good money. I was in a situation okay. similar to the Monaco situation. Did David, so did, was, did, did David Murray want to cash in? Uh, maybe. Because of, of, Cause of your age and you just had an operation. Yeah, two operations. Good money yeah. coming into the, into the yeah, club. Yeah, it's, yeah you, you got to go. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, yeah, I wasn't. Asked to leave. You were only forced. No, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you were forced. There was, there was but a deal on the table. That they were happy with. Want, yeah, if, if so in a roundabout way, yeah, they were looking at you to take that deal if and I go. If I wanted to go. If you wanted yeah, to go. If I wanted to go. But so was, was it a just, wink, wink, I, please no, go? No, not at all. No. Not at all. Um, uh, but it was a similar sort of situation that I was in Monaco with an injury. Got you. You know? Under so Wenger. It was, it, was, it was that sort of... And I'm thinking, does this work again for me, moving out on a, on a, uh, on an injury? Yeah. Does it not work out? But probably after about three weeks of being down at, Q at QPR, I knew I'd made a huge massive, error. A um, huge error. Yeah. So that was what was it? Seven row? You're saying, Grado? Seven row, wasn't it? So what would that yeah. be? End of the middle of '95. You yeah. left then, was it? So, yeah, so yeah, what, yeah, how yeah. did you then, feel when Mark Hately walks out? Well, I was only seven at that, that time, so I, I wasn't really kind of smartened up to that then. As I say, when, the, the when I started going to football was the season after that, so I had only known heard about Mark, you know. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. So, but as I said, when he came back, are you struggling with words again? You're fucking embarrassing <laughs> me, man. <laughs> McCoyster Lineker. McCoyster oh, Lineker. McCoyster every day. McCoyster was, was the greatest goal scorer I've ever seen. That's I've what I thought. At the start, with. you said that at the start. <laughs> um, and it is, it is. Listen, I'm so 100% for... McCoyster or Lineker? As a partner for me, yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely one hundred percent. He was the ideal player for me, and and I was the ideal player for for Alistair. And when when we joined, when I joined the club, and I think the frustration that uh, that Graham had with Alistair, he, he saw the potential in 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 Alistair that literally I saw after about three mm -hmm. days in training. His finishing was ridiculously good. He scored all sorts of goals. So I think the frustration that Graham had, I sort of tried to install into, you know, and yeah. say to Alistair, right, then this is what we're going to do. I think you can probably score twice as many goals, you know, and what Alistair would be like, he'd be laughing and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I think the realisation once after that first season, the first season, it was a, a, a long, hard season for me because I hadn't played right. for the two years. Yeah. It took me at least 20 odd games to get going. Right. Lucky for me, it was, you know, the, the, the running part of the season where I hit top form, Aye. you know, the 19, the Aberdeen game and all that sort Aye. of stuff. And I think that, that the, the, the two goals on that day reinforced what I believed I could get back to. What and was that I, day like against Aberdeen? I was just to get back to, let's get back to the Alistair thing. But mm -hmm. Al and as, when, as I said, Alistair, I'm, you know, fitness, you're going to have to work on your fitness because of the movement and all that sort of stuff. But I can guarantee you when we get in and around the box, if you're within 10, 15 yards of me, you're going to have chances. Yeah, right. yeah. And he went from 26 up to 48 straight away. You know, 48, 47, 38, 39. Mm -hmm. uh, but the best, best ever year for me was when Alistair broke his leg. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I scored 30 goals that year. I'll have you know. Because <laughs> you were setting them up for them. Yeah. That's why I scored so yeah. many goals. Thanks, Alistair, for that one, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, and then you come back to Rangers. 
Yeah, came back for the. Uh, I got the call on a Thursday. Was that, thought, so it was as quick as that. Yeah, really the first... yeah it was. Uh, you just I got, got a flight up. I and... thought it was a player winding me up. I thought, uh, it was, yeah, you know what it is. Your players on the. Uh, we're looking for you to come back up the road. But I, I'd have kept putting the phone down. I Who was it? Phoned you? Was it my agent? Right. Uh, and, and I thought it was somebody One impersonated. Yeah, and I kept putting the phone down. I put it down about three or four times, and I'd have refused to pick the phone up. And so my uh, the then wife picked it up. Said, uh, yeah, it's it's Dennis, right? Um, we used to call him Uncle Dennis, so it's Uncle <laughs> Dennis on the phone. So put him on. He said, Seriously, it's, it's this. We've had a phone call. I've had a conversation with uh, uh, David David Murray. Um, looking for you to go back till the end of the season, and then we'll see what we will do at the end of the season. After that, it took me a nanosecond to say, yeah, mm -hmm. well, I'm coming back, and uh, uh, um. Yeah, and that was it. Where was the players like when they come back? The players that you had seen in the alley and all that? Were they uh, all just, just the same. Aye, aye. <laughs> Delighted to see you, but... Yeah, yeah. Aye. I think, I think it is. Oh, we're listen, we're going to be lifelong friends for what aye. we achieved over that period. Um, you know, and, you know, it's, it's go down in history is probably one of the greatest group of players that played mm. in, in, a, in, a, in a long history of great players aye. that have been through the football club. So... Um, absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure having the, uh, the 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 opportunity to be able to play for uh, such a great football club and 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 enjoy the the frills and spills that comes from playing with a great football club. Got some questions here that we got from social media. I'm mm -hmm. going to throw these at you, Mark. Finally, mm -hmm. from Alan Brown, what has been your overall highlight of your career? The if you were to pick one thing out, it's still being alive, still being alive. Just being alive. Yeah. But in your football career. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got really serious. I know. Isn't it? <laughs> no, I'll tell you. You'd be surprised some of the nights out we've well, had. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, highlight my career. Probably, listen, right place at the right time. Through time, you, you same job wise, job wise, you, you just in that right area at mm -hmm. that particular moment. Getting a chance to play in that England game against Brazil, um, coming off the back of playing second division football, playing, uh, winning an under twenty one European Championship, then literally three weeks later play in the American R and score that header and score a winning goal. That sounds ridiculous. If you was to write that down, you say, "Come on, you're having a laugh." That's Aye. a fairy tale. Mm. Yeah. So, so that's, that's that a happened. Heli that, that and then four four days after four days after scoring that goal, I'm a Milan player. How's that work? Uh, Mental, isn't it? From Graham Kelty, what was it like playing in the Battle of Britain, Leeds versus Rangers? Absolutely fantastic. Get it right <laughs> up them English. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As, as you gather, I've lived in Scotland more than I've lived in England. Yeah, so I, yeah. You know, See, I'm see, not English, I'm not Scottish, I, I, so we're on that British I remember watching thing. that game. Do you remember that game, Greg? Oh, no, I was only four. When I, I've four seen it on like DVDs yeah. and all that now, and it's looking back at it now. And I tell you Gorham, what, the way Gorham played. Oh, and but Rangers were like a team possessed yeah. in those two uh, games. How good were we? Oh, you were outstanding. Yeah. You were outstanding. And nobody best, really gave you a chance either. Best two games of football, uh, European football, I played in. The first game, the second game, back to back was incredible. Right. The players that were on show that day, I forget they were the English champions. Yeah. M massively mm. good side. Eric Cantona, all these, Aye. Gordon Strachan, Gary McAllister, all, all. all these players. You know, it was it was it was phenomenal. But what I think what motivated us more than anything, it was just the negativity in the press. We're going to get yeah. we're going to get beat. Right. We're going to get beat heavily. England v Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a very uh, surreal build up to that game. You know, there's not a lot of team meetings. There was not a lot said by management. Um, it was a slightly different setup to go into the game. We all went onto the pitch before the game. We never used to do that, but management made us go onto the pitch. Yeah. And we normally straight into the dressing room, then onto the pitch, and then back off. But they didn't want us in the dressing room for some, you know, for some reason. So we went onto the pitch. We had five or ten minutes looking around. Yeah, great stuff. Aye. It's a nice stadium. Grass is good. Bar de bar de bar. We have a chit chat. What we're doing after the game. All that sort of stuff. Boom, boom, boom. As you do. Uh, and then we came in, and Archie and Walter had put all the press cuttings oh, all, the, all, all, all the way around the dressing room. All the way around the dressing room of you know. Rangers are going to get humped, blah, blah, blah. you know, all the English press as well. Even after the first game, on the Sundays after the first game, we, we were done. We were, we're never going to win the game. Uh, but we were, we were just as 
See, when we, that draw was made after we, we, after we beat, I thought we would go right away to the final with that team because we were that good away from home. Did you think you'd win the European Cup that year? I thought we could get and to would the you final. And would you have won it had said, Marseille not cheated? I said, probably. I, I don't know, but it would have been a great final for me because it was against Milan. Yeah. So oh. it, was, it, would have been, it would have been the come, idea. Come full circle. Yeah, absolutely yeah. full circle. But uh, um, so you, no. had the, you had the belief with the draw, yes, against Leeds, you could go all the way to at least beat, the final. If we beat Leeds, I thought we could beat all. As soon as the group stages come out, yeah, you know, I thought we could. We we were a fort, fortress at home, and we were a better side away. We yeah. were because the second goal against Leeds uh, typified what we were all about. We could defend all day long, right? We did it many times on in in Scottish football. We went up to Aberdeen many many times. Probably have. 30% of the ball, and, and we come away 1 0 winners. Yeah. You know? The goalie would make five or six uh, brilliant saves, and we would have two or three chances and, and, and kill the game. And we had the ability to do that. And in Europe, if you can do that, then more often than not, you're going to go a long way and deep into it. So you had a, a real belief that season, despite having to play yeah. leads, yeah, yeah. you could go at yeah. least to the final. Yeah, I felt we could be. And then do, do you feel now, Mark, when you look back at that time and how close Rangers? came mm. to even to, to get into the final yeah. and getting a chance yeah. to win it do you feel like you were cheated out of it well it was we were it's, it's, is that it's, still it's does, a, that, yeah, does, on, that, does that still file. the man, the man does that, that still or, piss orcus. you off yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely because you know it's 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 a fix basically it's a fix yeah. man went to prison for it did four years tappy better tappy the referee that sent me off was one of his players that got sent off at Bruges after about 15 minutes. Never a sending off. Uh, straight red, Polish referee. One of one of two or three referees at Tappy and mm -hmm. literally tapped up. Yeah, if you want. Paid. So it was it was it was disappointing. It was a, a real bad feeling, bad taste in the mouth, all that sort of stuff. But hey. You go on and you try and make it better, but unfortunately for us, we you know the, the, the year after that, I think the, the highs of being so close, you know, ref reflected the next year. Uh, yeah, when, you know, we we came undone, but I think the the, the the concentration was more on winning winning the league, mm -hmm. doing domestic stuff, and uh, as long as we're doing that, we were playing Champions League every year. What was your favourite goal for Rangers? That's from David Nimmo. The most important one would be the Aberdeen, the first one. Um, two nil game. Two nil game. Alex McLeish made me look like Pelly that day, and I, every time I see him, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thank him for I thank him for that. Um, but the first the first goal was yeah, it was a header. Um, I scored a lot of headers. I like scored that. Yeah, it's you know, and it, it, it was the second one stemmed from a challenge on the goalkeeper I made in the first ten minutes. So it was everything that I wanted to do on the day, and I felt so at home back without thinking about any any positional play. And I was back in, in, in into it after so the long injury, yeah, you know, so and that uh, that brought me to the scene, yeah. to the party. So that was your most important goal, your favourite goal for Rangers? Would it have been that one as well, that header? Um, yeah, that one. Probably maybe 57 seconds at, uh, uh, at Parkhead in an old firm mm. game. There's not many people score under a minute in that. The Leeds goal um, had a couple of great goals up at Petaudry as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots. I, listen, I enjoyed all, all all my goals. All the goals probably created more goals than than I scored. I never I never classified myself as a goal scorer. You know, I pitched in, uh, but I you know I pitched in on a yeah on a good number. You know, uh, for David Spears, any chance of you reopening your Rangers bar in Renfrew? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> So you're not getting back into the bar business then? Far too busy. Far too busy. Mark, uh, Stephen Gerrard, first season in Scottish football. I think you could label it as a success for yes. a guy who has taken on his first managerial job. Yeah. Um, what has he changed at Rangers? What have you noticed that Stephen Gerrard has brought to the club that was needed? A different past, mentality. A different Sam, mentality. Uh, Feel good factor. We're just, yeah, we just need it. But that comes from, that, that comes from a, a, a different approach and a mentality. It's like I said when we, you know, I thought we could win the Champions League. You have that built-in drive, vision, um, and attitude. Uh, he has a, I mean, it's been top of the tree uh, in, in the field he's been all his career and he's and he's, and he's bringing back to the club that has, has uh, had lost that I think um, he's ultra professional um, what he what you see up at the training ground all his players are the same he tries to pass that on to the players a belief when they go into every game that they can win games um, 
and 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 a level of professionalism that is expected of of, of Rangers Football Club. And what Stephen has he has already got that in abundance, but he's just reigniting um, a flame that's burned a long, long time within uh, within Rangers Football Club. But not only at the training ground that flows over into everything that happens in the in the business sector of of the football club up, up at Argyle House, mm -hmm. back up at, at, uh, at Ibrox. Um, you get that flowing through all the staff that are working now there. We've all so sort does, of got is, a purpose. So what you're saying, everyone is bought into Stephen Gerrard's yes. vision Correct. and belief. Yes, absolutely. So everyone Obviously. from, yeah. from the, the tea lady, the yeah. tea boy, whoever it is, we're all right the, through. We're all on the same sheet. All on the same script, yeah. right. When you look back at it, not from your perspective, but you think when Stephen Gerrard looks back on the season that has just finished, yeah. do you think he will look back and go, we should have won the league? We we should have won the league this year. He probably will do, but he will. Do have, you think it was a chance missed? I, I think possibly. As soon as the season finished, he would look over it quick, pretty quickly, um, and then park it and leave it, and then move on to and next learn season. From the he will know from every every mistake he would have made, and he's made mistakes this year. And he would have said, you know, but he would. He's such a good professional mm -hmm. and a, a professional that's been at the top of his tree all his career. That, that you know, intelligent people can learn from that and make themselves better people from that from that experience, and that's, that's what Stephen brings. And and can I just not say just Stephen, but everybody has around him has that same mentality. You know, from Mark Allen to uh, um, his team, the sport, Gary Mack, the same. Uh, Michael Beale, the same same sort of mentality. They all have that belief and a professional uh, approach that. It's terrific. I like that. Um, you know, we sh we we've lost we've lost that for a long time, but mm -hmm. it's back. And Gredo, you were saying actually that mm -hmm. there's things going on at the stadium that you've noticed. Mm -hmm. Aye. What's going? What's, what, what did you notice? Well, I, I had been told that in the dressing room area, everything was going to be be overhauled and to make to bring it basically mm -hmm. up yeah. to date because for a while there, I think the stadium was lacking and it was needing a bit a wee bit of an upgrade yeah. in terms of facilities for yeah. the players and even for their families and stuff yeah, like absolutely, that. Absolutely, 100%. So we is did, that changing? Yeah, we listen, we, we're a football club steeped in history, uh, but we need to be brought into the 21st century. The 21st century game is completely different to... You know, last century and and the century before that. Are those changes that. being made now? They're making the, we've, we've had them made up. The, well, the, the training centre, the two thousand, early two thousand. Uh, that's when it was born, oh, um, and that's work. been completely reshaped internally. And now, around the first team dressing room now, is more going to be an open area where the players will be in. I would imagine early uh, of a match day, and then they'll be behind closed doors, and they are one hundred percent focusing. On, on on what's going to be happening away from everything pitch. away from everything so right. they're surrounded with everything they need and uh, the tactics boards you everything. know you got the you know the, the the everything that they need there without any distractions i, I heard that as well but the barriers even at money park yeah because he doesn't want anything getting it no you know so no I filming i nothing yeah. at all it's like bang no even you know workers that are, they'll be kept away from the, the first team, team. Yeah. Yeah. First team. Yeah. there's a lot going on Aye. at the training ground we're having a new state uh, a new stand built for uh, for the women's football um, yeah and one of the first clubs um, in Scotland to to facilitate a, a, a women's football team um, and give them a pathway um, and it's it's just going great guns at all levels the youth level 17s the you know the the 18s um, so, so work is well underway already for the season that's coming up, 2019-2020. Yes. Yeah. And beyond. And beyond. Um, so you're putting your markers in place right now. Uh, but what every Rangers fan wants, and what Grado mm. wants, is to stop Celtic win nine in a row. And to do that, so Rangers are going to have to possibly all we've sign got some to, players. Uh, listen, all, all, all we have to do is focus on what we are doing and don't worry about what anybody else is doing. If we focus and commit to what we're doing, we will be successful. You will stop nine in a row. I'm saying if we can, can do what we do, we will be successful. And you, you, I can see it in your face. You've got a steely look about you, about, yeah. this, about being successful. It's like you mm. know that you're going to be successful. I've, listen, you know, I've been in the game since the day I was born, and I'm always optimistic. It's always half full with me. Um, and I, you know... It's always that, you know, how are you doing today? I am great. And mm -hmm. I am in a great spot right now. I'm back working at the football club after taking probably 18 years off of being lazy uh, and using that experience within the football club to, to develop it uh, mm -hmm. along with, you know, a great team 
up at the training ground. So and a great so team that so I'm you, working you, with. You, you will expect Rangers then to challenge for the title next year. Without a shadow of a doubt. And they will be up there or there's about. Yeah, I think they'll be more consistent next year. And the consistency wins your championships. The best, the best, time, the, the best team will win a league. Are you aware uh, of players that they're targeting? Yes. Yeah, and I've got an idea, mm -hmm. uh, and positions and all uh, that sort and of stuff. And you're going to get absolutely sweet <laughs> FA. <That's amazing. laughs> <laughs> um, how many players do you think Rangers need? Um, I would say conservatively probably three, maybe four, four uh, right. and, and, of, of and, and, a quality that will bring this the, the, group the, the, of players up to the next so, level. So are we talking three or four players that will improve the first team or improve the squad? In, in, improve the first team. That's interesting, yeah, yes. interesting. Are, are we talking different positions across the pitch? I would suggest that that would be across the pitch, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, would that be possibly left back? Probably not, probably <laughs> yes. And I've, what did I just say? Rewind two <laughs> seconds back there. Yeah. All positions. Yes, will be looked at. Yes. How, can I just ask a question? Do you, how do you think Stephen's dealt with players that are no cut at the uh, club? Uh, listen, I think he's been... How he is, he's 100%. Right. I think yeah, you have to be how you are. Uh, sometimes when you, you're trying to get there quickly, you have to be more ruthless than, mm. than, than not. Um, some big decisions will have to be made, I think, this summer. Um, Morelos, is he one of them? Listen, it's, it is what it is. If, if one has to go to, to, to fund the overall bigger well, picture. well-being, the bigger picture of a football club, then that, yeah. that will happen. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, Alfredo is a, is a great player, uh, already a great player for me. Um, He's a liability, though, isn't he? Yeah, but S S Suarez, before he joined Liverpool, was a liability. But Liverpool, you know, persisted in wanting to take him to Liverpool. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yeah. If you, you see beyond that, and a lot of teams will see beyond the, the, that, that, the five that red fault, cards. That yeah. fault. Yeah. Okay. And we've all made, we all made mistakes when with that young I would playing. be I would be surprised if Morelos is lined up for Rangers at the start of the season well well too any time will sell I, I would be surprised uh, yes he is a he is a player that has a big big future in front of him and yeah. goal scorers hard all, to come by hard to come by yeah at every level need to be realistic but I think I would like to see Morelos here for at least until January of next year I think we could get another Give him another couple of months. Uh, as I said in a couple of weeks ago, I think that sending off at Parkhead might have knocked a couple of million off him. And I know it's, I know that might sound daft, but I think if Rangers can get another six months with him, plenty of goals until then, the price will go up. We'll get more money and the funds are there to replace him. <laughs> Bye, Alfredo. <laughs> Thank you for the goals. <laughs> Jack do, you know the how, price. Do, you, do you agree with that? No, do you agree with what I said there? I think he's gone this summer. I think he's gone this summer. I see. I did. I did. I genuinely I did think, think he's gone. I think he'll be. End, I think he'll end up in the Premiership. Four, so there. Four months ago, I would have agreed with you, but I think just because that we can carry on at the end, the end of the season there. Mark's, I, Mark's, I, Mark's body language suggests to me. Well, that you're good at this. Mark's body language say, says to me that you're good at this. is away. Can I just say, Alfredo can play anywhere he wants to play. He can play in the Premier League. He can play in every. He can play in all the top leagues in I Europe. As well, right? So right now, so 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 what you're telling me, it's not the Premiership then. That's it could be about. anywhere. I've just told you he could play in any top. Right, so league. that's a hint. He might be going elsewhere. Maybe Spain. Maybe maybe Italy. Maybe might be staying here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying so fucking hard. Leave him alone. I'll leave him alone. What did you think of Sadiq? <laughs> 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 Because it just, it just interests me that I just I'm think to not, myself, I'm not wasting any words nah. on that. It. it just blew my mind, <laughs> man. I thought, is this guy meant by a football player? <laughs> I actually just, I, I don't know how that happened. How did that happen, Mark? Come on. I'd <laughs> 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 have been better playing that. Playing in that you reminded that me, you reminded me of that guy who somehow talked his way into getting a trial I, in England. That's right, but as soon as he, 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 he bammed up soon as he bammed up soon as phoned him up and said he was George Bay's cousin or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was like that, but it did feel Dude, like that. Roma paid five million for him. I like. know. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> You're taking a drink of water, Mark. Is there anything you want to say before we, um, we, we, we bring this to an end? Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been enlightening. Yes. Uh, Mark Haley, Rangers legend. It's been an absolute pleasure. I could have spoke to you all afternoon. It's been amazing. And I think we only skirted around your career and your mm. magnificent time at Rangers. So um, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome.
One more thing, I just noticed she said it four times, it is what it is. I don't know if you're a Love Island fan, but they, that's what they kept saying last night, it is what it is. Seriously? So just be aware of that. You might, you might be... Um, Seriously? I'm just trying to... Have you been watching... You mean me? you gave, it, gave up Death in Paradise to watch Love Island? <laughs> I'm a big Love Island fan. Oh, yeah. I'm a big Love Island so fan. So that's the phrase from that's Love Island. That's what they're Island. all saying. It is what it is. Because the joke is, pre Mark the Noel will be stitching it together. Because that's this, the catchphrase of the summer, apparently. It's Mark's and Mark catchphrase. And Mark said, I know, it's Mark's. I know. So I'm just telling you to beware. You might get accused of bumping it for Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I'm off. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Cheers, Mark. You're Thank welcome. you.